Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a tweet from investor Yaron Samid, who writes, The reports of the death of unicorns are greatly exaggerated. Hats off to the team at AI21 Labs. Now, the story that Yaron is referencing is that the generative AI startup AI21 has raised $155 million Series C at a $1.4 billion valuation, a nice newly minted AI unicorn. The story is interesting in one part because it's a big fat number, but more than that because it actually has a little bit to tell us about the state of the AI startup space. One of the things that's been interesting to watch this year is how VC and startup thinking around AI has been challenged in practice. Many of the companies that raised money in the immediate wake of the release of ChatGPT have effectively ended up being little more than a wrapper around the OpenAI API and haven't necessarily done well. We've spent a bunch of time on other episodes talking about why that is, ranging from the availability of open source models that enterprises themselves have used to customize, to competition from the big players. See, for example, ChatGPT Enterprise released this week. But by and large, there has been a sense that perhaps, despite AI seeming like the last great hope for the Silicon Valley funding model that proliferated during the zero interest rate era, maybe even AI couldn't actually sustain that shift. Indeed, on August 30th, Wednesday this week, the Wall Street Journal wrote a piece called AI Startup Buzz is Facing a Reality Check. Venture investors are realizing that generative artificial intelligence might not be enough to stem years-long startup downturn. Now, there are two things at work here. One is AI startups, how hyped they are, how immediately successful they've been, how much they will sustain portfolio returns. But then there is the much larger thing going on, at least as relates to the venture capital industry, which is, of course, this fundamental secular shift in the environment in which venture capital is operating. In the decade plus that followed the global financial crisis, the zero or near zero interest rate policies of the Federal Reserve and other governments around the world created a scenario in which more and more capital flowed into the venture capital asset class because companies and investors were forced to move farther out on the risk spectrum to achieve the yield that they needed. The availability of more total venture capital dollars meant, one, that startups were able to raise more money at higher valuations, and that, two, the dynamics of the industry were such that because of that proliferation and availability of capital, growth was prioritized over profitability. Think about it this way. If you're a company who knows there's another big dose of venture capital just around the corner, as long as you hit certain growth metrics, well, then you do whatever it takes to hit those growth metrics, even if it means lighting money on fire. If, on the other hand, you've just raised the last amount of capital that feels available to you, you're naturally going to prioritize things like revenue and profitability a hell of a lot more. Broadly speaking, across the venture capital sector, we've seen a shift in response to the fastest rate hiking cycle in 40 years of companies no longer thinking in terms of growth at any cost mindsets, and instead once again starting to prioritize things like revenue and profitability. Now, the one holdout to this model seemed to be artificial intelligence, where VCs and investors basically couldn't put enough money fast enough into any startup that slapped AI on its pitch deck. However, what the industry is finding is that even with the hype and excitement around AI, it's simply not enough to fight against those larger forces. Bringing it back to AI21 then, what makes it interesting is that it shows a number of differences as relates to many of the startup funding announcements that you were seeing maybe a few months ago. As TechCrunch describes, AI21 Labs' flagship project is AI21 Studio, a pay-as-you-go developer platform for building custom text-based business apps off of AI21's proprietary text-generating AI models, including its cutting-edge Jurassic 2 model. Now, two things that are notable about that. One, pay-as-you-go developer platform, i.e. there is already a revenue model. And two, this is based on proprietary AI models, not just something that's a rewrapper of OpenAI. The reason that I think it's worth spending a little bit more time on this than usual for the brief section of this show is that as you heard with that Wall Street Journal piece, there is this strong narrative in mainstream media right now that the AI hype has totally died down, that it's underperforming, yada, yada, yada. Now, I've talked extensively about why I think parts of that are true, but I think that the narrative is getting way out of hand and way over-exaggerated in media right now. And it would be an easy mistake to make to overcorrect from the perhaps over-exuberance of a few months ago. Just by way of example, if you look at this Wall Street Journal piece, it's the same example cited every single time in every article trying to make this point about hype dying down, which is really just ChatGPT usage going down in June and Jasper and one other AI startup having some layoffs. I don't know about you guys, but those data points alone are not enough to convince me that the entire hype around an entire industry hasn't paid off and that we should just go pay attention to something else. Now, one dimension of the AI space that's interesting is that it's not just traditional tech companies that are a big part of the community. Recognizing that, Andreessen Horowitz has announced a number of open source grants. 
In a blog post released yesterday, they write, We believe artificial intelligence has the power to save the world, and that a thriving open source ecosystem is essential to building this future. Thankfully, the open source ecosystem is starting to develop, and we are now seeing open source models that rival closed source alternatives. Hundreds of small teams and individuals are also working to make these models more useful, accessible, and performant. However, the people behind these projects often don't have the resources available to pursue their work to conclusion or maintain it in the long run. The situation is more acute in AI than traditional infrastructure, since even fine-tuning requires significant GPU computing resources, especially as open source models get larger. Given that, they announced the A16 Open Source AI Grant Program and announced the first batch of recipients, which are heavily emphasized around fine-tuning LLMs and foundation models for various purposes, including to run locally or to explore things like synthetic data. Now, speaking of shifting media narratives, alongside the broader AI hype is fading stories, you're also seeing more stories featured in big news outlets around companies walking away from AI content experiments, as opposed to a couple months ago, where the stories were all about companies trying AI content experiments. The latest comes this morning from CNN, Gannett to pause AI experiments after botched high school sports articles. CNN writes, Newspaper chain Gannett has paused the use of an artificial intelligence tool to write high school sports dispatches after the technology made several major flubs in articles in at least one of its papers. Several high school sports reports written by an AI service called Lead AI and published by the Columbus Dispatch earlier this month went viral on social media this week and not in a good way. One notable example preserved by the Internet Archive's Wayback Machine began... The Worthington Christian, bracket, bracket, winning team mascot, bracket, bracket, defeated the Westerville North, bracket, bracket, losing team mascot, bracket, bracket, 2-1, in an Ohio boys soccer game on Saturday. Says CNN, the reports were mocked on social media for being repetitive, lacking key details, using odd language, and generally sounding like they'd been written by a computer with no actual knowledge of sports. Now, here's what I have to say about this. I have no dog in the fight about how AI should be used or shouldn't be used when it comes to media. I think certainly the upside of having better coverage of more niche things, such as high school sports or just local issues in general, could be one of the ways that AI actually really adds value. In other words, this is not replacing a beat that a reporter already has. It's reopening a beat that has been replaced over the last 20 years as we've moved towards more general national rather than local news. But holding aside even that, when I look at this article that is being mocked, that has bracket bracket winning team mascot and bracket bracket losing team mascot in the first line, it feels to me as though the publisher in this case forgot that a news story isn't just the product of a writer, but also the product of an editor and a fact checker. Sure, the AI may not be as sophisticated as one would like if it would make that mistake in the first place, but someone either published the thing or made the stupid decision to not check it before it was published. In either case, I would put the blame squarely with the editorial team over the artificial intelligence platform. But like I said, I don't have a dog in this fight. I just think it's important to not be stupid about what's stupid about AI, given that there are some real honest-to-God battles to be had. Lastly today, because it's getting some buzz... An AI-powered drone has beaten a human champion of a drone racing league. NPR's All Things Considered writes, Today, researchers in Switzerland unveiled a small drone powered by artificial intelligence that can outfly some of the best human competitors in the world. A quadcopter drone equipped with an AI brain whipped its way around an indoor race course in a matter of seconds. In 15 out of 25 races, it was able to beat its human rival, according to research published today in the journal Nature. Says Elia Kaufman, an autonomy engineer at Skydio, a drone company based out of California who worked on the drone while at the University of Zurich, quote, This is the first time that an AI has challenged and beaten human champions in a real-world competitive sport. Now, there is something notable about this. I don't want to deny that. Obviously, it has implications for other areas of AI and robotics. Think, for example, self-driving cars. I do have to laugh a little bit, however, because I've watched for a decade promoters of drone racing leagues and professional drone sports desperately try to turn this into, as Elia calls it, a real-world competitive sport with what I would characterize as very limited success. But, like I said, still significant. Certainly, you have to think that militaries in places like China and the U.S. are watching this study closely. In any case, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, please go do it. You can find it on iTunes, you can find it on Spotify, basically anywhere you listen to podcasts. And once you've subscribed, if you want to throw a five-star rating my way, I would so appreciate it. It makes a big difference when new people are trying to decide if they are going to check out the show. In either case, thanks for listening or watching, and I'll be back soon with the main AI breakdown.